Hi there, Robin here from Expert On, and today we're going to be talking about wireless connections for your main powered speakers. Now, this can be used in all kinds of ways and with any brand. So, even though what we have on the table is from Alto Professional, it's their stealth wireless system, it's extremely popular and used on every other brand out there when it comes to powered speakers. It's built to be convenient and easy to use. It has a great range and we've seen a lot of videos where people demonstrate the ranges, but today we're gonna to talk about how to hook it all up and some of the things you can do to make it better. Uh, so that's what today's video is gonna be all about. And at the same time, we're going to talk about the expansion pack, which is good if you really have a big setup. And we'll also dabble with the uh, Alto Bluetooth unit called the Total. And that's more for reference sake, so this way you have an idea the difference between the UHF system, which is in the Stealth, and the actual Bluetooth system, which is part of the total. Big price difference. Okay, so we'll start with what comes with the actual unit. You're going to get two receivers, and these are the parts that go on the back of the speaker. They have a power switch on the front for powering on, powering off. They also have a channel select, and on the side, you've got a left-right option, so you can decide if you want to have it left or right. Uh, and then there's a squelch, so this way you can adjust the gain output on the actual unit. Now, there is a hole on the top. If you have a fly wire attachment on the actual speaker, you can permanently mount this on the actual speaker uh, or remove it every time, your choice. An adjustable antenna, so this way you can line it up the way it should be, so it's not in the way of anybody and it's pointing up. Now, if you have a fly wire attachment, you take the screw, you go through here, and you can now bolt it right to the back of the speaker. If you don't have a fly wire attachment, they do give you some options. One is a Velcro pad, goes on the back side, or they give you some screws and a bunch of washers to make it all happen so you can kind of permanently mark. Uh, but if you don't have a fly wire, use the Velcro. This way you can take it out, pack it up, and you're all set. When we get to the bottom of the unit, we've got two ports. We've got our XLR and our 12 volt power adapter. Now, 12 volt power adapter means we're gonna be using an AC adapter. So what I'll do is right about now, I'll pop an actual cable adapter, which I don't have, it's a power cord adapter, makes it easy to connect. You can plug this into the back of the speaker, it's gonna give you a pigtail so you can actually plug this in and then plug the power cord into that. That makes it very easy. If you need to be completely wireless because you're on a remote location and you're using a battery powered speaker and you need this to run off a battery as well, you can buy a unit like this. Now. They sell this everywhere, we sell this, Amazon sells this, so it's a battery pack. Holds eight, yes, eight AA batteries inside of it. Has an on-off switch, you basically put that on, you should get yourself six to eight hours uh, of, an, uh, of power out of this to run this guy, and that's gonna turn this into a completely battery-powered system. So, batteries in here, this guy's on, your speaker's battery-powered, you're good, so. That's one option when it comes to power. Now, hooking it up, it includes some nice short XLR cables, which can plug into the bottom, into the back of your speaker. Uh, if you happen to have one of those type of speakers that only has a line in for the quarter inch, not an XLR, uh, then you basically can use one of your mic cables that happens to be to an unbalanced, let's say, quarter inch with an XLR and that can plug into here and then basically plug into your line input. So that's an option for that. Now, that covers everything on the receiver. Now remember 200 feet of range is really good. Uh, if you wanna test the range, basically cut the antenna from the, either the transmitter or the receiver, that's gonna give you the difference to know that, well, how well did I do? Am I, am I on the fringe of being too far away? Uh, so that's a good way to test it because you don't wanna end up with a room with uh, 300 people in it and then realize that all of a sudden your signal's a little weak, cutting in and out. That just frustrates everybody. Now the transmitter has a good range, it's UHF, the most important part is in, it is in the license spectrum to go with uh, under 600 megahertz. So this way it's not interrupting any other frequencies that have been now taken away from wireless microphones and units like this, a wireless transmitter. So what do you have here? You have two gain knobs on the front, you've got a power knob, you've got a mono stereo connection. If you're doing a big hall setup, uh, you're probably going to be running in mono anyways, most likely. Uh, and then you have channel option on the front. So on the back, you've got two combo jack inputs, so we can use XLR or quarter inch, our choice, when we're hooking it up. You've got the same power supply that's actually on the receivers, 
So no government job here. This is going to work here or there. You get three of these with it, one for each. On the front, you've got gain controls, which are going to control the actual signal coming in here. That's going to get broadcasted out. So I can adjust it either stronger or weaker, depending on the system that I have. Now, if you're just, if you're buying this because you want to make your life easier, and you don't want to have to run cables everywhere and you just want to have a standard system set up every time you go out this is my wireless system this is how i'm going to use it it's done great you're probably only going to be having two speakers or maybe two on the left two on the right or you have a subwoofer in line whatever it is then you're by all means take your xlr cable plug it into your controller and then plug it right into the back of the unit that's it that's all if this is an extension speaker where you have two speakers already to the left and right of you, or you have your, your array set up on the left, your array set up on the right, and now you need to have an extension speaker somewhere else. Well, if you're just gonna use these controls, this is one of those rare occasions where it is okay to use an XLR Y splitter. So this way I can come off of my controller, split the signal so I can plug it into here and then keep going off to my speakers, and then you're fine. On the other hand, if you want to have even more control than this, or you're going to have this position somewhere and you want to have it. So if I wanted to hook this up so that it was separate from my actual main speakers, because this was going to be a remote and I didn't really want to use the controls on the front, I would probably have to look at having an actual mixer hooked up. So I would take my controller, plug it into the mixer. Then I would take the mains off of here, run the speakers I have up front with me. And then I would use in this case on this mixer, it only has one monitor output, so I can go monitor out. So I'd use one cable, choose the left or the right. Then I would make sure the receivers are gonna be hooked up to the matching set. So if I go left here, I'm gonna go left here. Then I plug this on top where it says monitor send. And that means on this particular mixer, it's a slider right here. So I have my main out, which refers to the main speakers that I have up front, and then my monitor out, which is gonna to refer to the speaker in the back. That's not gonna interfere with my headphones or with my boot setup on my actual controller. That keeps everything separate and I'm all good. That would be one way. Now, I'm gonna get another cable and show you a different way depending on the mixer you, or sorry, yes, the mixer you may have. So now, if the only option you have because of how you're setting up, maybe it's only a headphone jack out. Maybe it's a laptop, maybe it's just something that just has a 3.5 stereo connection to it. Then you need a cable like this, which is gonna be an auxiliary 3.5 stereo connection, kind of like small headphone jack. And it's gonna to go to a red and white quarter inch. This could also be XLR, but quarter inch is, is gonna work just fine because it's a short cable. Now, I'm gonna come in the back of the unit. I'm gonna plug both channels in here. Then I'm gonna take this. If I need to come off of an actual mixer that doesn't have a monitor out, or doesn't have any other options besides a headphone jack for a secondary control, because that's what we're looking for, a secondary option. We'll take this, plug that into the headphones. That'll allow me, instead of using the monitor in this case, if all I have is my headphone jack, find my headphone knob, this will now control what's coming out of here. Now this could have also been a, a laptop computer or something that you have to play from directly, uh, whatever it is. That'll let you go straight in this wireless system and off you go. So. If you're not using a controller or a mixer and all you're using is a tablet, laptop, or phone, this is how you can get straight into this system. We'll make sure and note that cable in our package options at the end. So again, another great way to hook that piece of hardware up. So there we go. Those are a lot of things to think about, but the idea is, is to have control over what you want. Who's gonna be using this? It's gonna get used by two types of people, people who need it and people who want it. So if you want uh, an easy, quick, convenient way to set up your system and then tear it back down again without having all the cables besides the power cord, this is the way to go. Uh, people that need it are people that have decided they've either run into the problem where you're doing a setup and there's an open vestibule next to you, there's a common space. Uh, if you're at a hall, you get a lot of rules sometimes. They don't want gaffers tape on the floor uh, or they don't want a speaker placed or any wires taped to the ground across the actual kitchen door. Uh, so there's no trip hazards, that sort of thing. And a lot of times you have to compromise where you're going to set up uh, because of these restrictions that they put. This is where a product like this allows you to put that speaker where you want it and be able to be wireless back to your actual controller where you are going to set up. 
So that's a big plus. If you need to go an extreme distance all the time, if you're doing outdoor events and they want you to have a remote speaker or two, this is a good way to go. Now again, remember, if you're hooking up more speakers, there's two options. Go out and get yourself some XLR splitters, so this way you can go to your main speakers in front of you, or you can buy the extension pack. Now the extension pack is basically buying everything that's in this box without, well, the transmitter, because you already have one. You can buy as many of these as you want, because once you have this, you're basically like a radio station. You're broadcasting out. Uh, so everything in 200 feet can pick up this signal. So remember, and also it's a good idea to keep this up high if you're gonna go full range. You don't wanna bury it deep underneath your table, because uh, I mean, that just doesn't make much sense. So again, those are some of the great options. Like I said, what makes this really good is the fact that it's versatile in its use. Uh, it comes with all the important things you need to get set up. So this when you do take it out of the box, it just works. The only thing you need to have are some XLR cables to go from your controller or your mixer back to the unit. Uh, that's the important thing. Uh, remember, if your controller or mixer doesn't have XLR outputs, you can use the proper adapter. So let me grab a cable here. Okay, so let's say I don't have XLRs on my controller or on my mixer. So you're gonna wanna get yourself either a quarter inch cable, both ends, uh, doesn't have to be balanced. It's not the end of the world if it's not balanced. Uh, and then, you know, in this case, I happen to have a better connection, which is an XLR. When possible, XLR is your first choice. That can now plug into the back of here. This can come right off the back of your controller or your mixer, right off the actual quarter inch. Uh, try to avoid using adapters when possible. It's always good to have the right cables to do the job. So. That pretty much covers everything here. Uh, we do want to talk about one last thing, and that's a reference between this and let's say using a 2.4 or gigahertz system uh, like uh, a U3 or something like that, which isn't bad. Those are convenient because they're versatile. Um, this has about twice the range as a unit like that. But besides that, if you get one, if you get one of these guys, which is uh, from Alto, and it's a fraction of the price, it's like almost one tenth the price uh, for each one of these. Um, this is Bluetooth. So it has great range because it uses Bluetooth 4.2 to make the whole system work, which is a new kind of standard with a lot of wireless option speakers. Uh, but this comes as a freestanding. Another one of these pieces that regardless of the brand being Alto, uh, every other brand speaker this is compatible with. So this is a very popular item regardless of what kind of speaker you have. Now, the difference is, before this even has to travel to the speaker, there's a, about a 50 millisecond delay. So if you're actively mixing on your controller, the delay may bother you, and that is a problem. So uh, this is used when you're doing just a playlist. Uh, so if you're using it for a wedding and you're using it for the service and all you're doing is, is gonna go straight from your tablet to the speaker, uh, then that'll work, that's okay. That's an easy way to get it done. Uh, I really wouldn't wanna have this while I'm actively using a controller because that delay is gonna be apparent uh, to you, not to everybody listening, but to you and that is a problem. So that's the only drawback to a product like this. Convenient, yes, fraction of the price. Uh, and it's got a built-in battery and all that, so all the conveniences are built in. But for a more professional, uh, stable, long-range system, this is really where you want to invest your money. Again, if you want to make your life easier, by all means, it's a good way to buy, uh, buy something that's going to make your life a little easier, less cables to have all around, a nice professional setup. So there you go. Uh, I think we covered it on it. Like I said, we don't need to test it out because it is just good. Uh, it does exactly what it needs to do, which basically means plug it in, hook it up, set that speaker up to 200 feet away, do some testing on it, make sure you're good, and you're fine. The UHF signal is solid, solid, solid. So there we go. That is what the Alto Stealth is. Uh, those are the options that they give you with it. Uh, it's an affordable way, even though it does have a price tag, in this world of wireless systems, it is an affordable way to get a lot of speakers hooked up. 
Uh, I hope that answers all the questions that everybody has on this because we do get asked an awful lot of questions about wireless and specifically on the Stealth system. It's got to be one of the most popular ones out there. So if you're looking for any of the equipment we have here on the table today, which is from Alto, or the cables that we talked about and the adapters, including the power cord adapter, which I think is awesome, and the battery pack, we're going to have a link down below, which is going to bring you to our showroom on Amazon.com. That's going to have all the actual product listed out there for you. So you can have an idea. I mean, these adapters are not the power cord is uh, power cord adapter is like 20 bucks in the US. Cables are like inexpensive. So the idea is to do the best you can with what you've got and to make it better by, you know, adding to your little portfolio, your bag of, of goodies. So there you go. Uh, if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. Uh, if you'd like uh, to ask any other questions, by all means, put them down there in the comment section. We'll answer that on the Q&As. And I guess we'll call that a wrap then. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.